Have you ever wondered how to recognize toxic behavior in relationships? I got you covered as our guest expert today will share valuable insights on this. Welcome to the Path to Purpose interview show where we dive into the captivating and inspiring stories of experts who have discovered their purpose and are living in it every day. I'm Katya Rosanen and my intention is to inspire you on your path to purpose. And today, I'm thrilled to introduce our guest expert, Leah Petrucci, who is a trauma-informed, holistic, and integrative practitioner. Leah's focus is on healing the mind, body, spirit, and relationships. She operates two virtual counseling and coaching practices where she helps women make lifestyle changes through holistic self-care. Lea also facilitates a group program for single women. So I am so excited to have Lea here to share how you can recognize those toxic patterns in relationship and what you can do. So sit back, relax, and get ready to be inspired. So welcome, Leah. I'm excited to have you here. Thank you, Katia. I'm excited to be here. And I'm just curious, was there a special event that led you to this path? Yes, there there were there was a definite special event that happened that led me to be a licensed therapist. Um, and that was uh, going through, as most therapists will tell you, we've been through some trauma. And that's what led us to want to understand how trauma works and how to help other people and going through our own pain. Um, and I did go through that as a teenager. I went through cancer as a 15 year old. And, um, you know, it's been 25 plus years so that I've been in remission, but it's always um, fascinated me how trauma, you know, affects your you and your loved ones. And um, so that's definitely one thing that uh, got me interested in understanding about human behavior uh, and then continuing going through chronic pain and chronic health issues even after that is what led me to open up my coaching, my health coaching practice um, over a year ago. So I would say those two things, um, mm. definitely. And then as far as the relationship, the interest in helping people recover from toxic relationships, it's because I've been through many of those myself. So pretty much everything that I um, help people with, I've been through myself. Mm. And thank you for sharing and having that calling to help others. I totally relate to that, like uh, being through some challenging life experience as well. And then having that calling, like maybe I can help somebody else if I'm sharing what I have learned from the journey. And I so hear you doing it. And as you have this wide area what you can help people with what are your main areas of specialization yeah so um so the main areas i really love helping people with of course are helping um, women i do sometimes help men as well recover from a toxic relationship but the majority of my clients are women that are need help with breakup and divorce recovery. So they're no longer in the relationship with the toxic partner, whether they were narcissistic or they were an addict or just unhealthy or abusive somehow. Um, and, and they no longer wish to return to that relationship and they want to work on um, self-care and prioritizing their health and wellness. They wanna prioritize their mental health and they wanna break that cycle. They wanna learn how to set better boundaries they want to um, stop choosing unhealthy partners. So that's one of my main areas of specialization. And that leads to the other major one that I love to do is helping people just to get healthier in their health and wellness, help, you know, help people make lifestyle changes, help them, you know, make sure they're uh, eating clean food and breathing clean air and drinking clean water and getting good sleep and, um, eliminating toxins from their body and avoiding toxic, you know, 
toxic mind, toxic body, toxic spirit, toxic relationships. Mm. Um, and, and what comes with that is, you know, codependency. That's another major area of specialization. And, and of course, that always comes with um, some anxiety and depression and trauma, PTSD. Um, so th those are my main niches are with the health and wellness piece, but they go together, I find. Uh, yeah, I find that almost always when I'm helping someone recover from a toxic relationship that they're recovering from a chronic health issue and chronic, you know, mental health issues. So they, they, I, I have found they all go together. Yeah. And that is your whole approach, like the holistic, yeah. practicing holistic uh, healing so that it is really the self-care um, for, yes. for us. So I love that holistic approach that you have. And let's talk about today a little bit more about those toxic relationships. And I know you do so much more, but we want to also focus yeah. on this as that is something um, that can hold us back. Like I work with many entrepreneurs and if you have a relationship that is not working, it's kind of sucking your energy and your focus and your mind. And that's that's everything kind of goes down from there. So yes. in your opinion, why, what do people struggle with relationship and especially this toxic relationship? What's what's the typical struggle that you can see people having? So so I wanted yes. to hear more about that. So a lot of the people that I serve are highly empathic or highly, uh, a term called highly sensitive person. It's not a diagnosis, but it's a phenomenon. And, you know, there's a lot of research out there about the highly sensitive person or the empathic person. And that's definitely something I relate to. And a lot of my clients that I serve relate to this. And and that can be a, a gift, but it can also be somewhat of a curse sometimes because we can attract those toxic people that sense that we are loving and compassionate and caring. And they sense that, oh, well, I can take advantage of this person and their kindness. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of the clients that I help have been raised in very dysfunctional family environments. And so they grow up thinking that that is normal. And then they seek out people that are similar and remind them of family members that they grew up with. And um, seek out subconsciously they don't recognize that they're doing it but that they're repeating these toxic patterns of of tolerating unhealthy behaviors from other people and you know typically aren't very good at setting boundaries and you know very codependent and sacrificing themselves and their care their well-being for other people and they continue to do this pattern until they they do the work you know, with a professional who can point out and hold them accountable to setting these better boundaries and taking better care of themselves. And that's, you know, one of the areas of, of coaching that I do along with the counseling is we talk about the, the why and we talk about the feelings behind it with the counseling, but then we also do a coaching piece of, okay, well, let's, let's make some changes. Let's set some goals. And, and then I'm there to gently keep them accountable, not in a shameful way at all, but a very gentle accountability, you know, maybe ask, well, what, why do you think you struggle with setting the boundary? What's going on? You know, or what are you telling yourself about what will happen if you set this boundary? Um, so it's a, it's a very deep process that, that we go through together and uncovering why people struggle. But a lot of times it goes back to childhood and, um, and sometimes we we use that as a reference. You know, we don't we don't get stuck there in childhood, but we use that as a reference to kind of identify some patterns and then go from there to identify the, the changes that that we can make. Mm. And one of the things when they come to you, why is it so important to practice this holistic healing when it comes to relationships? Yeah, right. Because I, I have found in my practice that if I just focused on the, the one thing, you know, of, okay, relationships, then we're missing 
and, and typically I will uncover that if someone is, let's say, tolerating toxic behavior in relationships, it's almost always true that they're also struggling with um, health issues. They're not taking good care of themselves. They're not making good choices in, in who they're allowing in their lives. And they're not making good choices of how they're taking care of their own self. They're not healthy. You know, they're, they're not getting good sleep. They're not um, taking good care of their body. They're not eating right. They're, they're not drinking good, clean water. They're, they're not seeing doctors and, uh, you know, or the, or the right practitioners who are really getting to the bottom of their issues. And they kind of tolerate certain things as normal as well. And um, that seems to be what what I've uncovered across the board is, um, you know, most people when they come to me, they're not just dealing with one part of the problem. They're dealing with all of those mind, body, spirit and relationships. There's there there's, um, you know, some obstacles in there somewhere that they all affect the, the each piece affects the other. If you're not healthy in your body, you struggle to have a healthy mind and vice versa. You're struggling to take care of yourself and have a healthy body. Then you're also going to just tolerate unhealthy relationships. So it's, I've definitely uncovered that holistic approach. And um, a lot of people tend to like that but may, may not realize until we start talking about it. Oh yeah. Okay. You're right. I, I don't really take good care of myself. And maybe that's why I tolerate unhealthy people in my life too. It's because if I'm not taking care of myself, then why, you know, why would it make sense that, that I, you know, would be choosing healthy people, but yet I'm not taking care of myself. It just doesn't match up. Typically it's across the board, unhealthy in all of those areas, mm. not just yeah. one. Yeah, and I always believe that awareness is the key, like to starting to see those patterns, those behaviors, because sometimes we are so living the day to day and we might not recognize them. So yes. I want to ask you, maybe helping somebody to see these things when they hear from you, like, what mistakes do you see people make when it comes to relationship? Because that might help yes. some to see like, oh, MG, I'm doing that or I have experienced that. So just wanted to yes. hear from you. Well, for, for example, when I work with clients that have um, that are dealing with breakup or divorce recovery from a toxic partner uh, person or, or maybe even they weren't necessarily a toxic person. It just didn't work out for whatever reason. The, the three major mistakes I see people make is that one, they get back out there and they date too soon before they've been able to really do the recovery work that it takes to break that pattern. So they date too soon. I always suggest, and I, people get mad at me for this, but I stick to it. I always suggest to give it at least a year after a breakup to really focus on yourself and do the work and not just not just give it a year like actually do the work with a with a therapist or a coach or both um so that's the second thing is that people might date too soon they might not get the help they might not get that professional help that they need and then the third thing is that they maintain contact with those previous toxic people for them to re-enter their life at a time when they might feel lonely or on a holiday and might think, oh, well, let me reach back out to my ex. Maybe they've changed. Mm -hmm. um, so those are kind of the three main things that I notice and, and I talk about with my clients. And, and that's, you know, another reason that I'm there for them as accountability is <clears throat> making sure that, you know, that they're, again, gently doing that work and that they're not keeping doors open to previous toxic people and uh and that they're continuing to also do work on their health and wellness their their emotional well-being um and and their spirituality if that means something to them doesn't mean spirituality doesn't really mean something to everyone and i definitely don't force that on anyone but if it does mean something to them we also incorporate some of their spiritual beliefs um so so those are some of the the biggest things i've seen um, 
that people keep that's why they keep repeating the same mistakes is they don't they 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 jump in there too fast or or mm -hmm. they'll go on those dating apps and i've just seen dating apps do a lot of damage um, because dating apps can be a, a breeding ground for toxic people and it's very easy for them to hide their true selves and and we talk about that too and what are some safer ways when they are ready to get back out there and date? Um, in fact, there's a project I'm working on now called the Dating Survival Blueprint, and I am sharing it with some of my clients. It's not finished yet, but um, uh, I hope to have it finished when I reopen my coaching group for women. And it's a it's a blueprint for the first year of dating. So when the person has done the work and they are ready to get back out there, how do they navigate this relationship without you know, um, repeating old patterns? How do they keep from getting enmeshed again and going too fast and jumping into old patterns again? How do, and, and how do they smoke out those un, uh, unhealthy, toxic people? And so I've created this dating survival blueprint that really helps people of the, like list the do's and don'ts, like first 30 days, 60 to 90 days. It goes through the whole year and give suggestions or guidelines, you know, of do's and don'ts and things to look out for and things to ask the other person. And so to really keep them accountable for practicing healthy behaviors this time around. Mm. And is that like, if somebody is interested in your coaching program, as you mentioned it, and somebody might be like, oh, tell me more. So is that yeah. where you help them to walk through? And can you share a little bit more about the coaching yes. program that you do? Yeah, so the coaching group that uh, that I do is for women. I, I had it going for about a year. Uh, I opened it up uh, last October and coming full circle, I, I gave it a try for about a year, just didn't quite have things in, in order and I didn't have the right vision yet. Um, so I decided to temporarily close the group so I could make some modifications and redesign it and really hone in on who I wanted to serve. And so I hope to reopen the group in January of 2024 for single women who are committed to not dating for at least six months and we do the work of breaking those patterns of uh, choosing toxic people. So by the end of those six months, and, and if they want even more, but I ask for a commitment of six months, really prioritizing their self-care in their, their health and wellness, their mental health, their spirituality and relationships. You know, we really do the work to break the pattern. And then once they've done that work, if we decide if they are ready to date, then we switch over and focus on that dating survival blueprint. And we really go over that with a fine tooth comb to make sure that they're, you know, remaining accountable and that they have this support group of other women who've been there. And so everyone can work to help each other stay accountable and to support each other. And, you know, also offer things for single women to do um, as far as meeting other single women, you know, and having those friendships really, um, uh, really fine tuning their uh, skills of, of friendships as well. So they don't feel lonely, you know, after a breakup. And it doesn't matter when they've had this breakup, it could have been 10 years ago, you know, and they just really still want to do the work to make sure that they're not going to repeat these patterns when they start dating again. Um, but we, we focus on, you know, an activity every week. It's all, it's all virtual. And every week I offer some kind of, you know, virtual activity, whether it's a guest speaker that comes to talk to them about their health and wellness or their mental health or relationships. <clears throat> and then we have a coaching call where I guide them through if they have questions or just need some support. And then, uh, and then one week we do some live practice of regulating our nervous system we do some nice um i like to use tapping which mm -hmm. is a proven method to calm the nervous system and i'll use guided meditations or some other neurosomatic techniques meaning you know brain and body using the brain and body easy techniques to calm the nervous system 
And then another week, we'll just have fun and we'll just gather uh, together over Zoom and do something fun together. So, you know, so people don't feel alone. Um, being a single woman can sometimes be isolating. And that's another reason that I created the group for single women um, that want to make that commitment to themselves. That sounds wonderful. And now, and of course, I recommend highly it. Come reach out to Leah if, if that is something for you. But just want to also leave everyone with something practical that they can do if they want to start practicing <laughs> the holistic healing when it comes to relationship and especially those toxic ones. What could be a first step that they could now as they are tuning in here, like, okay, now do something. What could they do? I, I always recommend start with education. And of course, there's some great education. Uh, you know, I'm, I have several videos on my channel, which is called Holistic Healing Network about narcissism, and how to identify toxic behaviors, especially in early dating. And I have a whole series that I've created that, it, that each video is being released every week. So I would start there and just educate. Uh, there's also great other great practitioners on YouTube that talk about this topic. The one that I learned the most from is Dr. Romani, R-A-M-A-N-I, Dr. Romani. She's um, a, a, amazing and her channel, she puts out new content every week about this topic. And a lot of what I learned about this topic was from her material. Unfortunately, we really didn't learn enough about it in my grad program. Uh, so I sought out learning in wherever I could and other practitioners that were offering education on this topic. So I would say, you know, just start with the education piece, just start learning about um, what that, you know, what that means and uh, what, what narcissism is and how do you spot it and and those videos on my channel are, are very specific about how do you spot these behaviors in early dating and and um, some of them are really short videos and some of them are longer. Mm -hmm. um, so that'd be a good place to start and then, of course, to schedule a consultation, you know, with me and we just have a conversation about it. That would also be a good place to start. Wow. And that is a really awesome gift to like to have that conversation, have that talk with you. I highly recommend it. And you have totally given us a lot to think about today. And I know you have put together a special gift for my communities to take what we have been talking about here today and go deeper with you. So can you share a little bit about the gift? Yes, so this is a PDF that I created called the Relationship Red Flags Checklist. It just recently got a makeover, so um, I, I'm, I'm happy to announce this because I think it looks a lot better than when I first designed it, <laughs> what, two years ago. But it's, um, it's a checklist of things to help people identify toxic behavior, toxic and or narcissistic behavior in both early dating and in later stages of a relationship because the two don't look the same you know someone uh, someone who is has narcissistic behaviors for example is going to appear very different in the beginning and early stages of a relationship that first year versus how they're going to act when they've been in the relationship for a while so i have two checklists basically in one it's two in one it's a twofer so the first one is 10 items that tells you um, gives you some very specific examples that i've received from my clients and that i've also experienced myself in my own relationship my own previous relationships so um, that would that would be a great tool to uh, and it's free download it and have that checklist and then there's also information in there about how people can get in touch with me and, you know, how they can find out more about what I do, how they can follow my work and all of those things. Beautiful. And you see all those in the show notes. And now do you have a special message you would like to share and leave the audience with? Yes, I have learned um, about myself and also about clients that 
you really need to invest in yourself. You know, self-care is more than just going for a massage or, you know, getting your hair done and nails done. It's, it's really investing the time, the energy and, and the money even in, you know, doing that deep work, getting that therapist or that coach or that functional medicine doctor, that's going to get to the root of the problem and not just cover it up with the medication, you know, not cover up the symptom really to, to invest in yourself. So there's three things, invest time, invest energy. And sometimes we have to pay out of pocket for things, you know, not everything is going to be covered by insurance. And sometimes it is worth it. At least that's what I've learned for myself is that uh, I will pay out of pocket, I will drive farther for a good quality practitioner. And sometimes that's just what we need. to be healthy. Yeah. And that is Putting, putting yourself in that priority list on the top so you can take care of you and that way you can take care of others and help and serve in the world. And it is so wonderful that you shared all those valuable insights with us today, Leah. And if you found this interview helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for more inspiring content. And don't forget to check out the previous episodes. I'm sending you lots of love, lots of light. Bye for now. Thank you.